To start running our program, I'm going to press the cycle start button two times. The first time I press cycle start, it loads the G code of the part we just got done programming. The second time I press cycle start, it's going to start running that job. Now remember, what's the first thing that we program? We program the tool change. So the second time I hit cycle start, it's going to go to that tool change position. Now before I do that, remember I want you to turn down the feed rate override, override knob so I'm in total control of the machine. I'm going to go ahead and hit the cycle start button the second time and right now it's actually moving to the tool change position. It's moving very slow because I have the feed rate override knob turned down. Now I'm going to speed it up. Now remember the home position that we chose, that we programmed in our tool change was X0, Y0, Z home which is where we're at right now. The control reached that position, it has stopped, and it's asking us to insert the tool and press cycle start to continue, and it's letting us know that it's asking for tool one, the center drill. Well, we already have the center drill in the machine since we used it to touch off for our Z0 position. So I'm ready to go to hit cycle start again, and it's going to start performing the operations that we programmed for that particular tool, which happens to be all the center drilling operations on our bow hole circle. So again, I'm going to turn down the feed rate override knob, hit cycle start, the spindle turns on, and now the control is moving to that first hole, that first center drill on that bolt hole circle. Now I'm in control with the knob. Things are moving slow because i got to turn down. I'm going to speed things up a little. You can see the z-axis coming down. I can speed up and slow it down, no problem. Now what I like to do is I like to press the feed hold button especially on a program the first time I've ever run it and the first time I've ever run this tool. Because what I want to do is I want to do what they call a reality check is I want to make sure that the DRO is lining up with what I'm seeing going on down here. So for instance right now the z-axis DRO is reading 4.6 inches. That means the top of that tool should be 4.6 inches above the top of our part because that's where we call Z0. This is the reality check. Now, look at it that, it looks pretty good. It looks about 4.6 inches above the part. Now, if you had some crazy number in there, like 11 inches, and it didn't look like it was 11 inches above the part, you either have a programming error, or you haven't set up your tools, or you haven't set your Z0 position properly. So that's the reality check. Before you go on, make sure that your DRO is making sense to what's going on. Now, I'm going to hit cycle start, and it's going to continue on. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, and I'm going to hit feed hold one more time. Now the DRO says 0.6 inches. I'm going to do another visual check, make sure that looks like about 0.6 inches above the part. It sure does. We're looking good. So I'm going to hit cycle start to continue to release the feed hold, and I'm going to turn up the feed rate. There we are. We're drilling. We're center drilling those holes in that bow hole circle, those five holes. <clears throat> Okay, there goes the last one. Now the, the z-axis is retracting to the tool change position again, and it's asking us to insert the second tool, the drill bit. Let's go do that. Okay, I got tool two loaded up. Now when I press cycle start, I am again going to turn down the feed rate override knob so everything goes really slow. And when that starts coming down, I'm going to press feed hold to do a reality check on tool two as well. Let's go ahead and do it. Spindle turns on, z-axis is coming down, let's hit the feed hold button, let's check that out. DRO says about three inches, quick visual check, three inches is looking pretty good, I'm going to let it go a little further, stop it one more time. DRO says 0.3 inches, well that's looking pretty good, looks to be about 0.3, so we got her all programmed right, the tool heights are set right. I'm going to turn the knob down a little bit, hit cycle start to continue, and now we're drilling holes. And remember we did a deep hole cycle, so you see it pecking down the amount that we programmed, retracting completely out of the hole to clear the chips. There are two other drilling cycles as well. There's a chip breaking which will stay in the hole and just back up a little bit. And then there's just regular drilling which will feed right down and wrap it out of the hole. Now at any point in time you can mash e-stop, don't worry about that, you will not lose position. As a matter of fact with the centroid you can start right back where you left off. It's a really nice feature. 
I release e-stop, I can hit tool check. Tool check is always going to retract the Z straight up. Now, to actually start back where we left off, I can hit go into the run screen, hit the search button, and right here it says enter the search line or block number. You can start at any point in your program with this particular feature. Well, when I hit e-stop, the control's smart enough that it remembers the line that I hit e-stop on. And it's giving me an opportunity to back up a line or two or else restart right where I left off. If I want to restart right where I left off, I hit F10 to accept that. And then I can hit cycle start. And the way we go, it's going to start right back where I hit e-stop. And again, I'm in control with the knob here. After we proofed out our program on that first run, we went back into Intercon and increased the feeds and speeds and turned on the flood so we can really crank a few of these parts out. One of the nicest features about a centroid is the ability to stop and retract the tool right in the middle of the job. When you press the tool check button while you're machining, the spindle will stop and the Z-axis will retract to the home position. Being able to stop machining in the middle of the job and pick right back up where you left off is a very useful feature. You can stop machining right in the middle of the job to check out the tool to make sure it's okay or clear away chips or check your fixture. Or like you see here, we're checking the diameter of our circular pocket making sure everything's okay. To start back machining in the middle of the tool check, I'm jogging the tool down close to the workpiece and then all I gotta do is hit the cycle start button two times. The machine will automatically restart at the beginning of the line or the arc that it was on when we press the tool check button. Okay, we're all done machining that circular pocket so we're bolting down the sock so we can machine the contour. What we did is we went into back into Intercon and we inserted a stop and wait for operator in between the circular pocket and the beginning of the contour. So the machine will retract to the home position and shut the spindle and the flood off and that'll give us a chance to bolt down the stock. All we got to do is press cycle start after that. We're prompted by that on the screen and we'll begin machining the contour. Okay, there you see the last pass of the contour. Remember, we machined a tenth of an inch at a time on the depth repeat, so this last pass is only taken off 50 thousandths. There we go. We're all done, ready to clear the chips away and unbolt that part. Now that I've shown you how to program lines and arcs with cutter comp and a few can cycles using the Centroid CNC control and intercon, you'll be ready to tackle those everyday jobs. If you'd like some more practice, check out the tutorials in the user's manual. They'll take you through step-by-step -step programming a couple more parts. Also, keep in mind we offer on-site CNC training nationwide, so give us a call or check out our website, centroidcnc.com, to find out the phone number of the representative nearest you. And good luck with your CNC projects.